Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the bones of the vertebral column. Now before I start with the explanation of the thoracic vertebrae with the specimen, please note that these holes in the middle of the body of the vertebrae are not a part of a true vertebrae. Since they are artificial bones, they are seen here. Now let's learn about the thoracic vertebrae. The thoracic vertebrae are 12 in number. They are identified by the presence of coastal facets on the sides of the vertebral bodies, right here. Out of the 12 thoracic vertebrae, the 1st, the 9th, 10th, 11th and the 12th thoracic vertebrae are atypical vertebrae, while the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th are typical thoracic vertebrae. Now let's look at the features of a typical thoracic vertebrae. The body of a typical thoracic vertebrae is heart shaped. On each side, it bears two coastal demifacets. This is the superior coastal demifacet and this is the inferior coastal demifacet. The superior coastal demifacet is larger and placed on the upper border of the body near the pedicle. It articulates with the head of the numerically corresponding rib. This is the fourth thoracic vertebra. So, the superior coastal demifacet will articulate with the fourth rib. The inferior coastal demifacet is smaller and placed on the lower border in front of the inferior vertebral notch. It articulates with the next lower rib. Since this is the fourth thoracic vertebrae, the inferior coastal demifacet articulates with the fifth rib. The vertebral foramen is comparatively small and circular. The vertebral arch shows the pedicles which are directed straight and backwards. The superior vertebral notch is shallow while the inferior vertebral notch right here is deep and conspicuous. This is the superior vertebral notch and this is the inferior vertebral notch. The superior articular processes project upwards from the junction of the pedicle and the lamina, right here. The articular facets are flat and are directed backwards. The direction permits the rotatory movements of the spine. The inferior articular processes are fused to the laminae, as you can see right here. The articular facets are directed forwards. The transverse processes are large and are directed laterally and backwards from the junction of the pedicle and the lamina, as you can see right here. The anterior surface of each process bears a facet near its tip, right here, for articulation with the tubercle of the corresponding rib. In the upper six vertebra, the coastal facets on the transverse processes are concave and face forwards and laterally, while in the lower four thoracic vertebrae, for example, the T9 thoracic vertebrae, the coastal facets are flat and face upwards, laterally and slightly forwards. In the last two vertebrae, that is the T11 and the T12, there is absence of coastal facets, as you can see. The spinous process of the typical thoracic vertebrae is long and directed downwards and backwards. The 5th to 9th spines are the longest, more vertical and overlap each other. The upper and lower spines are less oblique in direction. Now let's look at the attachments on a typical thoracic vertebrae. The upper and lower borders of a typical thoracic vertebrae in front and behind respectively give attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior longitudinal ligament. This is the anterior longitudinal ligament. This is the posterior longitudinal ligament. The upper border and lower parts of the anterior surface of the lamina provides attachment to the ligamentum flava. The transverse process gives attachment to the lateral costotransverse transverse ligament at the tip right here and right here. The superior costotransverse transverse ligament along the lower border right here and here. 
the inferior costal transverse ligament along the anterior surfaces, the intertransverse ligament and muscles to the upper and the lower borders right here and right here and finally the levator coste muscle on the posterior surface. These are the lateral costal transverse ligament. This is the intertransverse ligament. And these are the superior costal transverse ligaments. The spinous process gives attachment to the supraspinous and intraspinous ligaments. They also give attachment to several muscles including the trapezius, the rhomboids, the latissimus dorsi, the serratus posterior superior and the serratus posterior inferior and many deep muscles of the back. This is the trapezius muscle. This is the rhomboid minor. Now let's look at an easy way to remember the attachments on the thoracic vertebrae. The mnemonic used here is interesting sir became late for class and got trapped in a running elevator with anterior posterior lateral superior inferior buttons. Now please note that the green color indicates the attachments of ligaments, the red indicates the origin of muscles. Now interesting stands for the attachment of the intertransverse ligaments. Sir stands for the serratus posterior superior and serratus posterior inferior. Late stands for latissimus dorsi. Four stands for ligamentum flava as the F here are the same. Trapped stands for trapezius. Running is for the origin of rhomboids. Elevator is for the origin of levator scapulae as the word levate here and here are the same. Anterior stands for the attachment of the anterior longitudinal ligament, posterior for the posterior longitudinal ligament, lateral for the lateral costal transverse ligament, superior for the attachment of the superior costal transverse ligament and finally inferior for the attachment of the inferior costal transverse ligament. Now let's look at the first thoracic vertebra. It is an atypical vertebra. The body of this vertebra resembles that of a cervical vertebra. It is broad and not heart shaped. Its upper surface is slipped laterally and beveled anteriorly. The superior costal facet on the body is complete as you can see right here. The inferior costal facet is a demi facet for the second rib right here. The spine is thick, long and nearly horizontal. The superior vertebral notches are well marked as in the cervical vertebrae. These are the superior vertebral notches. The facet on the transverse process is concave. Now let's look at the ninth thoracic vertebra. It is atypical. It resembles a typical thoracic vertebra except that the body has only the superior coastal demi facet. The inferior coastal facets are absent. The facet on the transverse process is flat. Moving on to the 10th thoracic vertebra, it is also a typical and it resembles a typical thoracic vertebra except that the body has a single complete superior coastal facet on each side extending onto the root of the pedicle. Next we have the 11th thoracic vertebra. The body has a single large coastal facet on each side extending onto the upper part of the pedicle. This is the coastal facet on one side and this is the coastal facet on the other side. The transverse process is small and has no articular facet. Moving on to the last thoracic vertebrae, we have the T12. The shapes of the body, the pedicles, the transverse process, and the spine resemble that of a lumbar vertebrae. However, the body bears a single coastal facet on each side which lies more on the lower part of the pedicle than on the body. This is a coastal facet on one side and this is on the other side. The transverse process is small and has no facet but has superior, inferior and lateral tubercles. The inferior articular facets are lumbar in type, these are everted and directed laterally. 
but the superior articular facets are thoracic in type. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.